Hello everyone. Uh, now we are going to discuss uh, how to do a, how to uh, analyze the packets which is caused by the uh, TCP bulk uh, data transfer is what we are going to see. So before I start doing the experiment, I thought I'll just give you an idea of what we are trying to do. So here uh, we have to simulate the TCP bulk uh, data transfer is what we have to uh, do it. So there are many ways of doing it. One such way is that you can try uploading a particular huge file onto a particular server and then see how that huge file, uh, which is our data, is getting, uh, you know, a, a, a transport uh, or which, which is getting uploaded in the server. So what are the roles of the um, uh, TCP IP architecture uh, with respect to transporting such a huge file? So those are what we are trying to analyze it. So what we are going to do is that um, uh, we are going to open a web browser and we are going to type this particular uh, URL. So here, uh, what is this URL all about? Uh, you can see that uh, the this is the uh, UMass uh, server, uh, university server it is, who is actually conducting a lot of experiments with respect to Wireshark and all. So Wireshark Labs, there is a file called as alice.txt. There's nothing but uh, you all have uh, uh, read uh, the story of Alice in Wonderland. So the, it's a huge uh, file which is uh, there. So what we do is that we try to actually download the ASCII copy of this particular uh, file. In, um, uh, we just tr try downloading that huge file to our local computer. And then as a next step, then what we do is that we start the Wireshark as usual. And then we uh, go to that this particular URL and uh, try to upload that huge file. So we are going to see what happens when uh, this, when the moment I click upload alice.txt file from my local computer, you will be seeing what, how TCP actually, or how the TCP IP architecture uh, works on this particular file is what we are going to see. Okay. So I'm just uh, stopping this particular share and I'm uh, going to explain how it is done. So over here, I'm sharing the Wireshark screen. So you can see here, this is my Wireshark screen, all right? So uh, I am going to uh, capture a new packet only I'm going to capture. So uh, I'll just quit this, quit without saving. So I'll just open again. So over here, I'm sharing the screen now of uh, the Wireshark uh, analyzer. So when you open the Wireshark uh, analyzer, it will be looking like this. You all know that uh, by this time. So what I do is very simple. Okay. So uh, now uh, I have to now uh, 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 try to have a huge file. So this huge file, how from where I will be getting. So what you do is very simple. You go to this particular URL. I've typed this particular URL here. Okay. And then the first URL, you try downloading the alice.txt. You just try downloading it. Okay. So once the download is over, then go to the URL of uh, the this particular URL you just go uh, wherein I told you in the screen that we are trying to upload in the UMass server and before you click you know the upload button what you do is you just start off the Wireshark okay so here I have started capturing the packet now it is capturing all the packets one important thing is that do not set any filter you do open to all the packets okay now after doing this what you do is very simple go to that particular url and click on upload upload the alice.txt file whatever we have downloaded so you will get a message that you have transferred alice.txt from your computer and now as soon as you do this i want you to stop the simulation and then 
we are going to analyze what has happened to our packet. So you all know that uploading a file transfer protocol is what we, we have actually transferred a particular file and all these file transfer protocols and all work over TCP protocol is what it works. So I'm setting in the filter TCP and you can see it has captured a lot of TCP packets. Now we are going to analyze how, what is, what is, uh, why for such a file transfer, why so much uh, TCP connections are or TCP packets are exchanged, we are going to see. So you can see that over here, you can see a lot of TCP packets. You can see transport layer security protocol coming into play. And uh, all those details you can actually see is the HTTP because this is the, you know, uh, the HTTP request which I gave. I told you I'm trying to upload it. So you are getting a response code that 200 in order to, uh, 200 means okay in order to respond it, right? So these are something which is actually happening. So let us analyze what happens with respect to this particular communication. Okay. So over here, what all you can see is what, uh, uh, and then we are going to analyze. So you can see that over here, this one, if you are seeing, we can see that it is a TCP protocol, which is in action. And you have the source address, you have the destination address. And after this, you can see over here, lot of information regarding the TCP. If you just click on here, if you just click, uh, sorry, not this one. If you just click on the particular uh, uh, protocol, you can see the entire information. Actually, you can see the various, uh, 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 what happens in various layers. So it is a TCP protocol, which is in action the port in which they are communicating and each of the uh, packet is actually sequenced you all know that so in the application layer we have a huge file this file will be actually segmented by the transport layer each of the segment will be uniquely identified by a sequence number and once you get an acknowledgement then only the next segment is actually being transported okay so over a single tcp connection you can send multiple segments you will be sending right so this is what you can see there are a lot of flags ack flag if it is set as one we want an acknowledgement the tcp is works based on the flow control mechanism in order to have synchronization between the fast sender and the slow receiver so for that also you are having the window scaling window protocol and all we are having sliding into protocol so all this information you can actually see timestamp why we require timestamp because we don't want any old packet to actually come and then as a duplicate and then uh, uh, make the receiver confused so all this are very very important now moving on to the ip uh, protocol you can see uh, the various information like uh, what uh, what is the time to live of the packet how um, whether the dome fragment flag is set or what right or uh, uh, how how is it happening so you can see that it is uh, uh, here you can see various information that the flag is set dome fragment flag is set right and uh, the source for the source destination and all those details you can actually see right so over here 66 bytes on the wire transferred then over here in the ethernet you can see the various information the type of the protocol the source the destination the mac address everything you can actually see over here right so now moving on to this part over here, you can also see that this application data is being segmented into different, different segments. Over here, you just see each of the data have to be encrypted and all, right? We don't want the application data to be submitted in a clear form. So you can see how these are actually being, you know, um, uh, uh, the secure socket layer, you can see over here, right? Uh, so application layer it is http over tls is what is happening so we want uh, some level of encryption involved for the data which is being sent so for that you can see how the ssl layer works hand in hand with tcp in order to ensure the um, security part and all okay so like this you can see various segments see sequence number is 264 so we have uh, here we have got an acknowledgement that the next acknowledgement that we are expecting is 264 and you can see in the next one we are transmitting from sequence number 64 right and both way transmission is there the window size you can see here it was 16 here it is 501 
So the window size will tell you how, how much the sender can actually send, whether to send more or to slow down and all will come to know by checking the window size. And also you can see the timestamp value, very important just to know the uh, freshness of the information we are having this particular timestamp value. You can also see here how TCP uh, handles uh, the failures. So you can, you can see here the uh, retransmission which is happening right duplicate acknowledgement how is it handling all those information you can see now over here we all know that tcp works with respect to connection establishment first the connection has to be established then only the data transfer has to happen so over here you can see how the connection is established you can see we have learned about the syn flag syn flag is a sync flag so initially when we are establishing the connection the sync flag will be set as equal to one and it is sending the sequence number zero and acknowledgement it is next acknowledgement it is expecting is one and you can see the maximum segment size over here see maximum segment size refers to what is the maximum size that i'm allowed to transmit right so you can see how the how they are uh, the center and the receiver are actually communicating in order to find how to transport this particular uh, data so you can see over here how the um, application data is sent into different, different, different segments. And these segments are transported individually. In case of failures, the TCP also handles that particular part. And you can also see the window size, depending upon the speed of the transmission, how the receiver advertises a shorter window size or a la la larger window size, and how they are actually communicating in order to ensure flow control. Also, you can see this is where I'm giving the request. You can see that I first requested for the file, you know, uh, alice.txt. So this is this is the URL by which I I uh, try to actually get the file. So which is an HTTP request. So you can see here a get. Uh, 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 method also you can see right the then the connection is established so in between if a particular uh, 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 connection have to be closed then we use the pin segment then pin width is set as equal to one then it means that the connection has to be closed right so the how they communicate you can actually see how it handles the unseen segment and all those information you can actually see this is the reply that you're getting from the server when you are actually trying to upload the huge file you're getting the response code as 200 which means okay um, uh, uh, the successful response is what we are having right so like this you can see how for a simple task of a file transfer from a local computer to a server how uh, how the tcp and ip and all actually work hand in hand in order to ensure that the file is transferred in a more secure way is what we have seen here so the huge file is what we have to transfer so in the application layer we have the data as a file to be transferred so in transport layer uh, the uh, works with uh, you know secure socket layer ssl to ensure transport layer security or tls so what it does is that by uh, by um, uh, by uh, using the SSL uh, uh, socket layer, it provides the necessary you know encryption and all for the data. Now application layer will not bother about the size of the data that it has to handle. It will be transport. It will it will be just given to the transport layer. It is a transport layer which actually divides it into n number of segments. Each of the segment will be uniquely identified by a sequence number and uh, and uh, how they ensure flow control is by advertising the window size. So you can see a simple task of uploading a file to the server. There are a lot of packets which are being exchanged. So a lot of TCP packets are being exchanged in order to make sure that this is actually successful. So this is the uh, uh, important uh, thing that we want to convey to you by the, this particular experiment. These, uh, your these, uh, your uh, file transfer works over TCP. For TCP, the connection has to be established first. It is done using sync packet or sync packet uh, uh, wherein the sync width is set as one. Now, after that, the data, it will check for the maximum segment size, what it can transfer. It will segment the packet. Um, it, it will actually segment the application data into a number of segments, each of which will be uniquely identified. And each of the segment will be sent to the receiver by uh, ensuring flow control by checking on the uh, advertised window size. 
and once the data transfer is over the parties end the connection or terminate the connection by exchanging the spin segment and also we have the tls working hand in hand with tcp in order to ensure the encryption part so this is what uh, we uh, this is what is intended out of this experiment to analyze how tcp handles the bulk data transfer so in our case it was a huge file which we need to transfer to the so, so server side which we have uh, we had to upload to the server side so this is how to execute this particular experiment thank you